Okay guys, if you follow this channel long enough, I think you might know how much I really like and encourage the use of lithium iron phosphate batteries for RVs for a number of reasons. And while weight, power density, charging speed, and even safety are all important reasons to choose them over lead batteries, because these lithium iron phosphate batteries will have a built-in BMS, which means they have a little tiny intelligent computer inside them that turns the actual battery cells on and off depending on the conditions. So if your charge voltage from your RV was too high, it would actually prevent you from charging the batteries and damaging the cells. But they also regulate the amount of current that is coming out of the battery and into the battery. Lead acid batteries don't have that. And that's an important thing to think about when you are considering upgrading from lead acid batteries to lithium iron phosphate batteries like these ones from Time USB. And while I generally don't recommend using lithium iron phosphate batteries as engine starting batteries. Now besides the obvious size difference, this one only has 50 amp hours of capacity while this one over here has 200 amp hours capacity. Who would have thought a bigger battery has more capacity than a smaller battery? But that's what I want you to look at. If you look just right here on the cover page of the manual, we have 200 amp BMS. And this one over here says 50 amp BMS. Which means this smaller time USB battery can only discharge 50 amps of current continuously before it shuts off the cells on the discharge. Whereas this 200 amp hour battery has a continuous charge and discharge rate of 200 amps. Now generally most vintage and modern RVs will not be utilizing 50 amps of continuous current draw when you are living or using the RV. However, it is an important factor to know when you buy a lithium iron phosphate battery for a trailer or a motorhome that has a hydraulic pump for slide out rooms or leveling jacks or even heavy duty 12 volt landing gear, which is all running off the house battery, or is a starting battery for your onboard generator. If you undersize your BMS from your batteries, you're gonna run into problems. Let me illustrate by getting rid of these maintenance nightmare lead acid batteries that are bad. Now while these dangerous and gross lead acid batteries do have cold cranking amps of about 750 because they're dumb. You can short them out and overheat them. We don't really need that much for an RV and we can get rid of a lot of battery cables. So out with the trash and in with the good stuff. Now keep in mind this tiny little battery with 50 amp hours of capacity is about even with this one that has 100 amp hours of capacity, but we don't want to use all of it. We can only use about 50% of it before we damage these batteries. So it's actually pretty close in comparison for capacity. It's so little. All right, don't have to worry about ventilation now. Let's see, we have good power. Now, while the small battery might have 150 amps of surge load available, continuous is going to be downrated to 50. If the pump starts drawing more than 50 amps for longer than a second, it's going to cut the battery. As we come inside, we can see we got lights on. And if I can go to the battery, look at that, battery's fully charged. We'll go ahead and hit slide. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, I lost power. But my battery doesn't work anymore. So now the battery has to reset itself, which it has. It's turned power back on again. I got power again. But I'm still left with the slide out rooms stuck in the out position, even with a brand new battery. Let's try the bigger one. This time USB 200 amp hour one has a surge discharge of 400 amps for five seconds on top of the continuous discharge of 200 amps. Should be no problem. It's so light. 11 pounds. Which should have more capacity than those two combined is only 42 pounds. And just one of these is 51 pounds. 52 pounds. All right, don't need this trash. So that should have no problem. All right, the next slider slide comes in. 
Man, that pump even sounds faster. All right, I'm holding my finger down. And these slides came in without a problem. So it is very important when you're ordering lithium iron phosphate batteries to know if you have a generator or hydraulic jack or leveling system that you need to operate because while you can get find a good deal on small ones, you might be better served with just one big one like this. Gets rid of a lot of battery cables too. And no maintenance. It's kind of the way to go. Now for whatever it's worth, if you are pricing these things out, as of today, filming this, a simple super start lead acid deep cycle marine battery group 27 is about $140, brand new. Uh, it's prorated, I think, for about 18 months. Now, right now, the small time USB 50 amp hour battery, which is comparable to the capacity of this group 27 battery, is $103. So basically the same amount of capacity as this battery, but about $30 cheaper, okay? Now you might say this has more reserve, but you will damage this battery over time if you go all the way down to the depth of discharge of zero. Whereas this one has a five-year warranty on it and you can use that complete total depth of discharge on it because of the BMS. Over here, if you went with the 200 amp hour battery, which is basically four of those, this one is uh, $399, still has that five-year warranty on it. And I guess if we did the math, that'd be at least saving $200 based on lead acid batteries. Of course, don't forget, we don't have to do any maintenance and the weight savings and the battery cable savings. But I do want to point out the start of this video, as much as I do love lithium iron phosphate batteries like these ones from uh, Time USB, lead acid batteries do still have their place. These are great for starting engines, especially diesel motorhomes. Uh, and gas motor homes. You can kind of get away with generators with most of these uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, but for uh, starting the engine, you're still gonna want a lead acid battery. And I know this follow-up question is gonna be, fine, you've convinced me to get lithium iron phosphate batteries, but now I have to upgrade my inverter or battery charger. Your existing battery charger will still charge these batteries. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are much more stable uh, chemistry than the lithium ions you're thinking about. While it would prefer about a voltage of 14.2 to 14.6 to fully charge, if we even get it up to 13.4, 13.5, it's still going to be 100% charge. If we only get it to 13.2 or 13.3, we're still getting close to 80% charge on the battery. And even the alternator from your motorhome is still at 40 amps, gonna have it charged from zero basically in five hours. I do hope this video and this information helped everybody. There's still a lot of confusion on when lead acid battery is good and when lithium iron phosphate batteries are bad. Uh, like I said, you probably don't want your chassis batteries upgraded to lithium batteries at this time. Just stick with the lead acid batteries. Your house batteries, Definitely upgrade those. It's about time. It's cheaper. They're better. You're going to be happier. At any rate, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Bye. If we even get it up to...